Mr. Ed Ray, do I see you, sir? Oh, hi, Ann. <laughs> I'm trying to get us unmuted. How are you? I'm good. How are you guys? We're good. Thank you. I need to figure out why my camera's not working. So I'm going to play with that for a second here. Yeah. I had to click on start video. Uh, get all these crazy formats of different stuff going on and then it, you know, does different stuff. Mm, right. Yeah. There it is. <coughs> there we are, Kim. There I am. I'm going to shut my doors behind me too. So you don't have to look at my table. <laughs> <laughs> about that. <laughs> there. All How right. You two? Hi, Colin. Hello, everyone. Well, it's, it's, it's <laughs> noon, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, uh, welcome to, uh, once again, a virtual annual mm -hmm. Sunshine meeting. Obviously Yay. not what we uh, wanted to have happen again, but uh, I do appreciate everyone's uh, involvement and uh, uh, engagement as well too. Uh, because of uh, you know getting <laughs> back to Zoom, and uh, I'm sure not unlike many others, we didn't want to meet uh, uh, virtually again for um, our annual meeting. So this meeting will be a little bit more straightforward. Uh, and won't have all the pomp and circumstance. Not that we had a whole lot, but uh, as we normally would uh, meeting in person. So uh, and basically, uh, uh, we'll have an opportunity to uh, to thank uh, those outgoing uh, members of the uh, uh, Pasco Chamber Board of Directors, welcome the new uh, board members elect. And uh, um, before we do that, uh, a little bit of an update from uh, uh, myself and kind of give a, a state of the chamber um, and then we'll hear from uh, Jason Hogue who is our outgoing uh, president just to uh, um, provide a little bit of his perspective so make sure you have your seatbelts tightened for that uh, portion of <laughs> the meeting and then uh, uh, soon after that we'll, we'll uh, adjourn so that we can get on with our days so uh, again welcome everyone uh, thanks so much for being part of this and being a part of the Pasco Chamber of Commerce. Um, there are a few folks that I do want to recognize before we go in, uh, and it's traditional for the uh, um, Pasco Chamber to recognize uh, its past presidents because we do really appreciate, um, you know, for for next year's 110th anniversary that the leadership that the Pasco Chamber really. Uh, um, you know, needs in terms of our past presidents. So I do want to recognize a couple that have joined us here today. We have Kevin Williams with IFC Insurance. Kevin, if you want to say hi and, and wave your hand. And uh, of course, we wouldn't have a meeting if it wasn't, or actually I'll be here if it wasn't for Ed Ray, the godfather of the Pasco Chamber of Commerce. So welcome, Ed. Welcome, Ann. Thanks so much for, for, for your, your participation in not only the chamber, but um, through the Pasco community for, for many, many years. Uh, it wouldn't have happened with, without your involvement, that's for sure. Your fingerprints are on a lot throughout the, uh, uh, the region and uh, we'll continue to have that as we move forward too. I also wanna take a moment and thank the uh, people that stepped up and, and uh, uh, paid for their luncheon today. Uh, it, really, it, it's just kind of a, a sponsorship and you'll see them listed here on the the PowerPoint that I have uh, uh, rolling on the side here and uh, um, really couldn't have done it without you. And, and I want to give a little shout out to Kevin Williams uh, going back into form like when we started this almost a, a little over a year ago, meeting in person and, and, and stepping up with a, with a larger sponsorship. So IFC Insurance and Kevin Williams, thank you so much. Uh, uh, again, one wouldn't happen without uh, all your support. So I wanted to kind of give an update a little bit of what we've gone through over the last year at the Pasco Chamber of Commerce. Um, 
Uh, I mentioned that uh, a little over a year ago, we, we started meeting again virtually. Uh, so that was, August was our first meeting. So September uh, of last year was our first uh, uh, annual meeting that was held virtually. And we had a, a, a good keynote speaker from the Washington uh, Department of Economics, uh, our, our state chief economic uh, advisor. I really don't remember what his message was, but I know that there was probably concern as to what the uh, pandemic is is wrought on uh, not only our area, but uh, Washington State and what it does to uh, our, um, our financial budgets and, and so forth in Olympia. That was a challenge that we had to face this year um, in terms of the legislative process being all virtual. Um, there were some good things and bad things that came out of that. Um, one of the, the, the highlights or positives that came out of, of, of a remote session is it really gave uh, people in our area in Eastern Washington or those that are far enough away from Olympia to engage on our um, prospective legislation that, that, our, that our representatives were going to be uh, uh, hearing and acting on. So, uh, and from that standpoint, the engagement was really high. Um, the downside is I think a lot of uh, work gets done when you're in person and, and catching our representatives, uh, you know, in between uh, votes or committee meetings or just in receptions and really given an opportunity for, for people like the Pasco Chamber, <coughs> excuse me, the people like the Pasco Chamber to engage and, and tell our stories. So that was a little bit more of a challenge this year. I think it was a challenging session uh, a lot of the businesses uh, had um, some legislation that came through that wasn't necessarily to our, the business community's favor, but uh, you know we, we'll be right back at it, advocating on, on parts of our, our businesses to make sure that uh, we can continue to have a, a positive uh, uh, business climate here in Washington State. Um, you know, a year ago at this time, <clears throat> there was a lot of uncertainty with the future of uh, what the Pasco Chamber was gonna look like. Um, you know, I think at this point last year, we thought we, a lot of this would be behind us, obviously it's not. Um, but uh, with the challenges came opportunity and Pasco Chamber uh, stepped up and uh, took advantage of some opportunities that helped provide revenue for, for our association. Uh, first off, we, uh, um, um, had our um, River Fest uh, canceled, but we pivoted and had a documentary that was made that still has a lot of lasting legacy. Um, the documentary was aired here in the Tri Cities a couple of times. I think over 15,000 households had an opportunity to watch that, as well as uh, um, playing it earlier this spring in Seattle in the Seattle market on Como. Um, really good uh we we're number one in the time slot then we're going into a sunday evening news and so we had a lot of uh engagement from there and our uh coinciding with that is we had a digital campaign that focused on the i-5 corridor explaining the importance of our hydropower system and especially the lower snake river dams and, and that's quite uh, interesting to see all that data i mean we uh in uh, engaged or we had almost a million impressions on the I-5 corridor. And some of the neat things that came out of that is our, our greatest engagement came from areas like Eugene, Oregon, Kent, Washington, Seattle, Washington. And that's where we wanted to really get our message out to. Uh, and so I think from there, that's a success. Anytime you uh, jump on the Tri-City Herald online, if there's any story that has to do with the Lower Snake River dams, You'll see that a little vignette. It's always placed on the stories of uh, Rachel Little with the Benton Conservation District, explaining uh, her the how the 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 snake or the salmon from Eastern Washington and their life cycle and how that interacts with the the um, the orcas in Puget Sound and and did a really marvelous job in about three minute period of explaining the challenges that that creates and so we're. We're indebted to all of our partners to make that happen. And, uh, and we're still looking to do the same thing again this year. Uh, I think it hasn't been decided yet, but we'll probably um, 
a look to air our documentary in the Portland area and the Spokane area as well too. So uh, stay tuned for more news on that. In addition to that, um, similar to uh, um, to engagement like the River Fest, we, we did get a contract with Labor and Industries to do COVID outreach, uh, and that uh, uh, enabled us to continue to, to do some work. Uh, along with that, too, we helped Franklin County uh, distribute the, the remaining $400,000 of CARES Grant Act money, <clears throat> which was uh, really a challenge for, uh, for us uh, because that CARES Act money had to be out the door by November 30th, and we launched our portion of the program uh, the second week of November. And so uh, gaining the the applications, reviewing the applications, and then um, and then uh, um, sending the money out uh, was a challenge, and, and really couldn't have been done without the help of subcontracting that we've done with with uh, Soul Case Management to get that uh, to happen. Um, I think with our success of the CARES grant, which um, the, ours was a small portion of a few million dollars that they sent out, <clears throat> we were able to engage. Uh, a lot of businesses, the, most of them that uh, aren't able to um, get news from the normal uh, news of this grant through normal uh, avenues, whether it's social media, um, emails, uh, TV, radio. And so we were able to have an engagement with these businesses that really needed it most. And so I think that that really helped Franklin County have a good reflection of CARES grant money going to what our community looks like. And uh, I, with that, the success of that, the city of Pasco um, with their ARPA funds that just came this year, um, being one of the first uh, cities, if not the first and only city right now that is actively distributing ARPA funds to businesses that need COVID relief. And we're, we're thrilled to be a partner in that process. At this point, we have um, a half a million dollars that we we're going to uh, um, provide in grant money to those businesses that have been harmed by COVID. Um, the, the downside of that is we have requests that exceed over three million dollars. Um, I expect that the city of Pasco tonight will work towards um, providing uh, additional funding for that. And uh, so that we can help more businesses that, that have been harmed by the pandemic and shutdowns. Um, and then last uh, but not least, one of the projects that we've been working on for a long time is uh, really, um, and it's a good segue into a lot what Jason's gonna say uh, later is, is, is promoting what the Pasco Chamber does. And, and one of those iconic symbols of how we're going to do that is have a billboard on uh, Highway 395 as you're heading, uh, uh, coming in from the north side of, of, of town, and you're going to see a big uh, a billboard that says, uh, uh, keep your eye on Pasco, uh, just because of the growth and everything else. So we have stylized art going up. If you've been up in that neighborhood, you'll see that the, uh, the frames are up. Uh, I'm, I'm very antsy to get that totally uh, complete and done so we can promote what Pasco is about, especially right next to where the billboard is, is where the Ryman Industrial Center is at. Uh, you're going to see Dairy Gold uh, hopefully building very soon in that area. Uh, the Colville Tribe uh, with their plans for their, their land purchase, especially with the expansion of, of Reesers. There's just a lot that's going on. And so the timing of this billboard couldn't have been better. Uh, I appreciate Ed Ray's uh, uh, effort into making this uh, happen. I'm, I, I really was hoping it'd be up by now. And, and I know, Ed, I owe you a phone call from last week. I think they're getting printed. They were supposed to get printed this weekend, the panels. And so I'm knocking on wood. <laughs> we hear that, but hopefully we'll see those panels up uh, this week. And uh, can't happen soon enough. But I, I appreciate uh, um, the uh, um, uh, what we've been able to accomplish in a year where a lot of uh, businesses weren't able to, to do that. And so as, as an organization, I think the takeaway is extremely positive at the Pasco Chamber and the future looks really good as well too. I, uh, a couple of 
items that we're going to be working on in the future, along with the city of Pasco, is create a business portal, uh, primarily targeting businesses that are starting out or have questions in terms of uh, regulation compliance. A nice, easy one stop shop to go to. And so we're in the uh, development phases of that. Pasco Chamber will be taking the lead on making sure that occurs. Um, Franklin County still has some ARPA funds. Um, we're hoping to engage with them when they're ready to uh, disperse uh, those funds to the community and, and, and those expenditures. We have a concept that we call resiliency, a resiliency business grant. One of the takeaways from doing this work from this past year is, um, is really getting a feel for some of our businesses located in Pasco that just need a little bit more effort in creating a strong foundation in their business so that when there is a next economic downturn, um, whether it's pandemic related or not, those businesses that uh, we all depend on, whether it's for quality of life or tax revenue or for jobs, they can withstand any sort of downturn and we can provide them with a, an ability to weather that and be stronger. So making their businesses strong now so that moving forward, they can be stronger in areas of, of accounting, inventory control, regulatory compliance, uh, market analysis, where we'll, we'll help those businesses that need a helping hand up and provide them an incentive to better their business. And then with that, uh, everyone will be able to uh, benefit from that. So looking forward to launching those programs in the coming future. And uh, um, I'm, I'm as from a personal standpoint, uh, it has been a, a challenge, but it's been very rewarding this past year. And, and uh, next year, as I mentioned, April 15th will be the Pasco Chamber's 110th anniversary. Um, I started right when we were, uh, I started here at the Pasco Chamber right when we were celebrating our 100th anniversary. So it's been a, a fun 10 years. And, and I know that the Pasco Chamber will continue to uh, become uh, uh, celebrating many more milestones as we look forward to that. I think that the state of the Pasco Chamber now, uh, having come through the, the pandemic, at least to this point, is in very solid state. And I know that we'll have the opportunity to do much more moving forward. So with that, thank you for the time. I'm going to invite uh, our outgoing president, Jason Hogue, uh, to uh, uh, take us through the rest of the presentation. So Jason, you have the floor, thank you. Uh, thank you, Colin. Um, and I appreciate um, you stealing the thunder of all the good things I was gonna say. I appreciate that, thank you. You not only have you ruined the last year of my life for this, you've now ruined my final speech. Thank you, Colin. Uh, no, just kidding. Um, everyone will, uh, thanks everyone for joining us for our, our annual meeting. Um, it's it's almost like I was never the president. Um, we had what, two meetings, three meetings, and uh, I think I ran one of them because I was out of town for the others. So uh, it's, it has been a, 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 you know, a different kind of a year, but one that as Colin just laid out, that actually caused the Pasco Chamber to kind of look inward, um, regroup, and actually be very successful. And we couldn't have done it without a lot of, uh, without our board of directors which many are on the call today. So um, just real quickly, I want to thank all of you. Um, Tara Wiswald, Joe Roach, Kim Fall, Randy Hayden, Rolando Rodriguez, Janet Mick, Shane Anniger, Daryl Ebert, Vicki Haynes, Nick Punch, Del Clark, uh, Dave Zabel, and of course, Rob Di Piazza. So thank you all to all of you for, um, you know, for the hard work we put in this, this year to kind of, you know, keep the chamber going. Um, the chamber's uh, mission um, every, it basically, like if you go to our website and, and read our mission, it is to foster a good local business environment and, and also enhance the quality of life here in Pasco. And the 2020 to 2021 um, was no different. The chamber, despite you know, the, the issues, was able to do that. Colin already mentioned the grant programs um, where we were able to take some CARES Act funds and get it directly into the hands of business owners here in Pasco. Um, a couple other organizations, I think, were tasked with doing it. We were able to get to actually hit businesses that those organizations weren't able to hit, um, and and with in specifically in in the downtown area, and in around um, downtown Pasco. Now we've got the ARPA funds um, that are coming in from the city, and so we want to thank the commissioners for letting us help with the CARES Act 
money. And then also we want to thank the city council and the city staff for working with us in the great partnership on the ARPA funds. All told right now, it's close to a million dollars that we're going to be giving out in grants to the local businesses. So that's definitely fostering the, you know, the, the local business community. Um, and our, along with our quality of life, Colin mentioned, mentioned the Riverfest pivot. This was a, uh, an event that was supposed to have three, 4,000 people to celebrate our rivers and our way of life. And, you know, kind of, it even looked like it might happen up until, you know, summer with, uh, you know, with COVID cases kind of doing what they were doing. It looked like it still might happen. Then all of a sudden at the last minute, literally six weeks out, Colin, this group pivoted and made a long lasting video that can be played over and over and over again. If you go to the Pasco Chambers YouTube page, you can share that. Not only do we have the big long 45 minute to an hour long production that was executive produced by uh, Colin and the, the chamber and many other partners along with that, there's also little clips that you can send um, and, and view that are just in segments about different parts of the river system. It's one, I think it's one of the best things that we've ever done. And as Colin has mentioned, it's been shown in the I-5 quarter multiple times. It's been shown here multiple times, and we're going to work to get it in, have more viewings of that. And that's something we pivoted from an event to something that can be, you know, that can be used for many, many times to come. Um, and uh, oh, apparently riverfestwa.com is where you can view the video. That's another well. place where you can view it too. Yeah. Um, um, Colin has mentioned the LNI grant work we've been doing. That's been going on for quite a while um, since I've been on the board for the last five years. Um, so that's been working. And then one of the things the Pasco Chamber has always kind of struggled at um, since I've been around, and one of the things that the board of directors has been wanting to do is, is tell our story a little better. Um, us Pasco folks, we're humble, right? We don't we like to do good work, but we don't necessarily like to talk about it. We don't like to brag. That's what they do on the other side of the river, right? Um, over here, we uh, you know we like to do things and just keep moving on about our day. But we know the world we live in is about branding and marketing. So we, we did decide this year with the help of the board of directors is partner with um, a social media marketing firm to help tell our story. And for those of you that don't already follow the, the Pasco Chamber um, social media pages, please do. There's been a lot of cool um, you know, pictures, photos, highlights of members. We'll have videos coming. It's gonna be awesome. It's good and we're really proud to uh, you know, to see what that's going to be, and that the way that relationship is going to grow over the next little bit. Um, also, the one-stop shop business portal, partnering with the city. Um, again, we're trying to you know to foster that local business community. Imagine those of you that are business owners when you started. If there's one place you could go to find out where you needed to get licensed, where you needed to to get all the things you need to do to operate a business. This, with the city's help, the Pasco Chamber is working on that. We're, we're going to hopefully have that ready. And then the Resiliency Business Grant is probably the most exciting thing that we have coming in, in my mind, um, because many people get into small business because they have a passion for, for something, whether that's they have a passion for baking or for cutting hair or for their restaurant or fixing cars, whatever that is, they're really good at that. But then as all you business owners know, there's a lot of things on the back end with insurance and taxes and uh, marketing analysis, the financial literacy, all these things kind of come into it. That's one of, one of the things that we want to build is a grant process to where these new businesses can get the training. They can, get, they can learn that at the front end versus getting two, three years into their business and making many mistakes that takes them several years to climb out of. Um, so that's also been a focus of the board of directors with Colin. So we're really excited about that grant. And so if if anything, I could say after my time here, um, the year, even though it's been mostly virtual, we're still doing everything that our mission has said. We're working toward making a better business environment. We've got a lot of partners, whether it's the Port of Pasco, the City of Pasco, Franklin County, many others, the PUDs, in, in helping with that mission. And so we want to thank them as well. But I think the Pasco Chamber is stronger than I think it's ever been. And the future is brighter than it's ever been. So whenever we turn 110, year 111 will probably will be the best year of the Pasco Chamber. So um, thanks again to everybody for the past year. Um, real quick, we also want to introduce, say goodbye to some of our favorite chamber members. Um, Joe Roach is no longer going to be with us. Joe decides that he wanted to be a painter and uh, paint things. 
no, congratulations to Joe. Joe recently um, acquired Matheson Painting. So he's going to be, um, he was a phenomenal asset to the chamber um, with, he does great on financial analysis, great leader, um, who was the president in the, before. And then also Tara Wiswall, who actually, with Edward Jones, who stayed on an extra year by our request because of COVID. So she actually went above and beyond her duties. And, um, and you can't say enough about the leadership that, uh, that those two have provided. And um, Tara, Tara really helped us focus on some of our ag events that really haven't been going on, but helping us pivot. So thank you to those two. Um, as they leave, we do have a couple more, a few board members that we're going to bring on. Um, so we would like to introduce the new board members. Um, so Janet Mick from Miniman Press, who actually was um, an appointee last year, so did serve on the board, but now she's officially been nominated, voted on, and uh, it's official, official. So Janet Mick will be a, be a part of the uh, board, of, uh, board of directors going forward. Um, James Sexton, Sexton from JMS Development. Um, James is a general contractor and developer for about 10 years. And he's currently, you may have seen his work soon out at Osprey Point um, with the, the multi-use community, with the, um, with, the, with the market and many, many, many other things that are going on out there at Osprey Point. Um, and then finally, uh, Walter Timmons, uh, Banner Bank. He's a commercial lender. And he also shares the Chamber's mission to foster a um, vibrant local business environment. Um, He's been uh, giving money to businesses for years. And so, um, so we like that um, as we move into that world too a little bit. Um, and as I keep getting, um, as this is, as we kind of wind down here, um, one of the things that I've been getting, I've been getting calls and calls and texts and texts and what are you going to do now that you're not the president? What are you going to do with what's going to happen, Jason? What are you going to do with all this time? And so I've decided that I'm going to uh, do a couple things that all presidents do when they leave office. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to profit off of my presidency. Um, that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to profit off of my local service. And um, I started a new business called um, Chamber, um, Chamber Clothing Company. And what we're going to do is I'm partnering with Laura Hastings, who is going to take all the fibers from that, that thick, strong fibered beard that Colin Hastings had for most of COVID. And we're going to make nice sweaters. <laughs> uh, for everybody. These things will last generations upon generations. People can pass them down. And we're really excited about this opportunity. And then um, the last thing, um, second thing I'm going to do that, again, all presidents do when they leave office is take credit for things that they had nothing to do with. So during my time here as president, PASCO had unprecedented economic growth um, with the new Dairy Gold uh, Reasers, possibly Costco, Local Bounty, and of course the market at o Osprey Point. And I know those things could not have happened without me. So um, I, I, I appreciate the support of the board of directors as you know I forged through to make those things happen. Not really, um, but uh, but no, that will be one of the things of 2020 into 2021 was despite the pandemic, Pasco because of our great city leaders, county leaders was able, and, and the great community we have was able to grow um, despite who the chamber's president was. So um, anyway, um, so that's what I'm gonna be doing um, after we're done here. But uh, the, one, the, the chamber business will continue and I will stay on as, as on the board of directors as the past president, but really quick, um, and I apologize, you didn't get a warning, but I wanna uh, welcome our new president from Conover Insurance, Kim Fall. Kim, say hello to everyone. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I just want you to all know I do not have Jason's sense of humor, so I'll just apologize on the front side. And, you know, maybe you can give me a few courses now that you're retired from your presidency, Mr. Hogue. <laughs> I think you, I think you actually, from Kevin, got a uh, standing ovation for not having my sense of humor. So. Uh, <laughs> So I, do, I, think I really, will, will, I really do want to say, even though you may have only stood in front of a meeting or two, um, those of us that, that sat on the board and certainly the executive board had a very challenging year wondering if our chamber was going to make it. Um, getting through COVID, losing staff, losing 
the events that we do that fund the chamber and figuring out uh, really how to do it very, very differently. And we did it quickly and um, succinctly and uh, really have grown into some new places and some new things that excite me to see our chamber doing. So something besides just a collection of money from the community event. So I'm super excited about that. And I probably was the loudest voice about <laughs> letting the community know what we do. I mean, if you all knew how many letters we wrote to our governor during COVID about the fact that our people aren't working and our businesses were closed and what the effects of that were and, and why aren't there more testing places in PASCO so we can test for COVID in PASCO where people can get to them. And um, I just think there's so many things we do that that most of the people in Franklin County just don't even know. So a huge mantra of mine, I think people need to know what we do. So anyway, hooray, I'm glad we've made it. And Colin's been amazing. I mean, I'm sure he has more paper cuts than he's gotten in all of his time being the executive <laughs> director of the chamber, but um, just a great job to all of us for pulling together. And Tara, thanks for staying an extra year because we certainly used you, so. Yeah, onward and upward. Uh, great, mm -hmm. awesome. So um, the uh, next chamber meeting, Kim's first in running, as she is super excited about, um, is currently scheduled for October 11th, uh, Monday, October 11th. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Colin will get the, the invites out. Um, Colin, anything else that you'd like to add for the good of the order? Uh, no, I just uh, thank, uh, thank everyone for uh, being a part of the Pasco Chamber and, and really a lot over the last um, 18 months or so, uh, decisions were made uh, by the board of directors with a lot of thought and, and really are, are the, the, the real uh, winners here. And so thank you for that. And, and then one other thing too, I, I, I don't know if, if he snuck on late, but I, I overlooked introducing another past president. Uh, Daryl Ebert, who is back on our board of directors, so is a glutton for punishment too. So uh, uh, I apologize for that for overlooking. Look, he's you. blushing. He Look, he's blushing. He did want you to recognize him. He was a little <laughs> teed off there. I no, it was not your fault. I, I did get on a little late. So thank you. So that's all I have, Jason. So go ahead and take us home. All right. Well, everyone, thanks a lot. It's been a fun year for me. Um, we'll we'll get this over uh, a little quickly since we got nothing to eat. Thanks, Colin. Anyway, um, thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of your uh, rest of your Monday, and we'll see you guys all next month. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. See you soon. Bye.